This movie has so much going for it, so much potential, but a few crucial elements brought it down so it wasn't a great movie, but just a good movie, an okay movie. So join me as I break down the good and the bad of It Lives Inside. Desperate to fit in at school, Sam rejects her East Indian culture and family to be like everyone else. However, when a mythological demonic spirit latches onto her former best friend, she must come to terms with her heritage to defeat it. Bishal Duda, the director of this film, is a name to look out for. This is his first full feature film, and he did a great job on his first time doing a horror flick. Unique camera angles really did a great job of building the tension and focusing on the right spots so the tension would build properly visually. And he had a, or at least the script and the screenplay had a very big focus on negative energy and bringing that in and letting it in and just entrance and exits and doors. And he did a lot of things with motif in that way, focusing on doors, jiggling handles, and the creepiness of someone coming into the places that you don't expect them to be at. I hope he gets more opportunities uh, after this film because he did a really good job and I will be there if I see his name on another film. And he does like to say, cut the check. 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 Cut the, check. the sound design, the score, the way it was shot, all really done really, really well. Cinematography looked really great, really textured, and I think that they did a great job with making the colors pop, and the sound design is top tier because there's a lot of times where you're just waiting for the beast to arrive, and this thing is invisible, so we don't, all we have is the sound design. All we have is the sounds that it's making, and they did a really good job of using that, other than the, the really great camera angles and the, the eerie atmosphere they build, the sound was really, really important in this film. The movie constantly kept you on edge, fearing for the characters' lives, and really did a great job of putting you in different types of POVs throughout the film to really grasp the type of danger they're in. Hey, knock it off! There's a kid back there! <laughs> I'm in danger! And the movie's opening is really effective as well. It sets the tone for the film as it shows the first victim uh, and what they're going through, and we kind of see what is to come for our main character. And Mecha Suri, the main character who plays Sam, she did a really great job in this film. I've been a fan of her since I saw her in Never Have I Ever, and from when I saw her in that show as a supporting cast member, I was like, she has main character vibes. She looks like she could be a main character of a show, a movie, and I think she really proved it here, doing a great job with conveying all the emotions that she had to convey to get her around this story about detaching from your culture and it bringing you to other negative energy and demons and she just did a really great job i think that she's on the path if she keeps doing horror films for being a, a screen queen and joining the likes of flores pew Anya taylor joy and maker monroe and the cultural aspects add a little spice to the film because it's very specific to east indian culture and megan character Sam is not friends with her best friend anymore because she's trying to fit in with the American white friends that she has now and because of that it leaves her friend to be in a negative space for this demon to latch onto and what they did really creatively here is show the process of what happens to with the friend so you know what's about to happen to our main character so you're already seeing the end part of it and we're getting to the beginning with her so we're seeing the full process and circle with two different characters while they're trying to help each other. I thought that was really creative and I think the movie did a good job of executing it. The direction, the performances, and a really great supporting role for Betty Gabriel. Yes, the girl, the smiling old lady, the aunt from Get Out. Didn't even realize it was her that whole time, but she did a really great job of playing the teacher who cares about the students who are having a hard time. I totally believed her and I was rooting for her the whole time in the movie. So she did a really great job of elevating that part and elevating the movie in general. But this is a horror flick with a monster. It lives inside and the monster is actually pretty gnarly and pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. I was very, very surprised because this movie doesn't look like it's super expensive or anything like that, but they did a very practical thing with the monster, even though it's hidden for most of the part, but when the parts of it is revealed and shown, it is like a xenomorph and a predator mixed together and it's 
insane. I don't want to describe it too much because if you're going to go check out the movie, I want you to see it for yourself. But they did a really great job of executing the monster's attacks when he sh when he, when it shows up. It's lore. Lore was very interesting because it was specific to Indian culture and the way they conveyed it and revealed it and the details of it throughout the movie was really good and we got more of the monster as we did that and what it does and how it plays around with its victims. I think all that stuff was very interesting. Now, the reason why this movie falls short from being great is not because of the things that I talked about the good at all. I don't really have any negatives to say about that. It's really the script and the screenplay. They are very underwritten and they do not match the talent that is in behind or in front of the camera, unfortunately. Look on a mask with my boy. The script takes cues from more recent films like It Follows, Smile, The Boogeyman, but unfortunately, those tropes are never rised above. Those films, especially Smile and I think It Follows, did something there where it felt unique, it felt fresh, and it felt like fun in a way that had like a lot of detail, and they don't do that here. And they had a very great chance to make a very unique film because this was focused on Indian culture with a monster that is specifically from that culture and their mythology and religion and lore and everything like that. But it's used as dressing, is never the core of the story, which I think was a big mistake. I think they should have really, really focused on how it, attaches to them specifically and not attacking everybody else and and all this other stuff they really should have just leaned in on that and the uniqueness of it to make this movie feel unique and the screenplay fails because there's a lot of details missing from certain aspects like characters getting into buildings or certain places that they shouldn't have access to and one or two scenes added here and there very short could have been 30 seconds could have added there and you wouldn't have those questions in your head like how did they get back into the school or the they had the thing of the the, the kid is trying to deal with this problem that's bit too big and won't tell the parents and it never made sense to me throughout the film until that she actually said something why she wasn't doing it and they could easily add a little bit of extra here and there conversation actions something with detail why she wouldn't do those certain things so it made the character feel a little dumb at points but the character was being portrayed as a character that was intelligent so it was kind of fighting with itself on there and there was just a lot of moments where the screenplay could have done things a lot more interesting to elevate like regular tropes that we see all the time. And my biggest grievance with the film is that the fact that I think that the tension building, the lead up to the scares or to the things was more scarier than the actual final result. So a lot of times you're like tension, 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 and then it's kind of released and you're like, okay, that wasn't that bad. I didn't need to cover my face. <laughs> I really wish the movie was scarier than it was. It, Like I said, it, there is, it's eerie. It builds a lot of tension. It does a lot of tropes really, really well in terms of executing when the monster attacks or things like that. But the end result is very, very tame. And I think that ties into my next point of the tameness of the film. It feels like it's trying to be an elevated horror film, like a Midsummer Hereditary, but it's not the, the the elevated part is not elevated enough. It's not focused on enough. It's a little messy and all over the place, the, the themes and the things that they're talking about, and they don't always tie together as clearly as I think the movie wants it to be to be tied and I think that it also feels like a your stereotypical horror film with a monster in it and you have to overcome but because it's not as violent as it needs to be or as scary as it needs to be it falls short there so you're in the, like in a middle ground where you're like okay this part's good and this part's good but none of it's great so that's kind of where it falls short the most so overall, I left this film feeling like the movie has so much potential to be another great horror film that's been coming out in the last couple years, but it falls short because of key areas. I do have to say that I'm very impressed by the director. I'm impressed by the main character, Megan Syria. Hopefully she gets more roles and gets to continue showing her range because I think that she has a lot of range and like I said, can be on the path of an Anya Taylor-Joy and a Florence Pugh and that would be really big for any actress to pull that off. And she's very likable as well. Even though she was doing things in the movie that I was like, oh God, she just comes off very likable as well. But the director, I'm really excited to see if he gets to do something else after this 
even though I think this movie is probably not going to do that great in theaters. Hopefully people see that he has talent and we get to see him direct more films like this. So with overall said, I had a good time watching the film. I cared about the characters. I was fearing for them. The, the monster was awesome. So overall, it's definitely not a bad watch. And I would say it's worth the watch, especially if you want to see more diversity in filmmaking. Got to support unfortunately the decent ones first before we get the great ones so with that said i'm gonna get and live inside a c man i gotta tell you guys about my theater experience here usually i do the like it but i'm gonna tell you about my theater experience not a lot of people were in this theater for this movie unfortunately and it was uh three groups one group to the left of me that was fine they weren't really talking they were laughing and kind of talking at the right parts of the film there was one group in front of me that just would not shut up at all and then one on but they were they were talking about the movie at least but then there was one on the right of me that was just talking about everything but the movie and it was just driving me insane and they met eye contact me and i gave them like a look and they would stop for a little bit and then continue luckily it didn't take away from my movie theater experience but it was just really disappointing because because that's the first time that's ever happened in that theater i usually have really great experience in that theater but just want to let you know guys <laughs> a little bit of the personal experience i had watching this movie but like the video if you like my review let you youtube know that you enjoy my content subscribe to the channel or attack that subscribe button i should say and hit that notification bell so you can be notified my reviews reactions live discussions and join this growing community and you can watch more of my content right now